Today, we have a reviewer request of who would win, Goku versus Superman. This question has been asked many times since the early 2000s and pretty much since even Goku's inception since Super Saiyan, as both are absolute powerhouses of their own universes. Both characters are incredibly strong and pretty similar with each new evolution or writer bringing the debate back up again. Today, as of August 2024, we will definitively answer the question, who will win, Goku or Superman? Starting off with Son Goku, he is a member of the warrior Saiyan race, born under the name of Kakarot. And just a fun fact, every member of his family is named after a vegetable, as are most Saiyans. I just think it's kind of funny. He was sent to Earth as an infant by orders of his people to be a bit of a proving ground for him with the ultimate goal of destroying the Earth. He was found as an infant by what would later become his grandfather, Gohan. Gohan took the unruly and extremely aggressive child and tried to raise him as his own. Luckily for Gohan, Goku had a bit of a tumble and was dropped on his head, causing him to lose some of his memories and a bit of his destructive nature and he became a lot more like his his mother, became a bit more energetic, kind-hearted, and became a lot more like the Goku that we know today. Gohan raised him and was shocked and surprised by Goku's inhuman physical abilities. Gohan ends up dying, and it's later revealed to Goku and the Watcher that Goku accidentally kills Gohan. And then after this event... Again, Goku doesn't know that he killed his grandfather. He ends up training with Master Roshi, the Turtle Hermit. Goku trained for years, entered many fighting tournaments and to save the world countless times and just keeps getting stronger and stronger as I'm sure at least most people are familiar with. The series has been running since the 90s. You need to keep upping the strength of the villains. You got the strength of the villains. You got to up the strength of Goku. You got to keep something interesting. Goku's a very pure-hearted character. He has an intense love for his family and, like those of the Saiyan race, has an immense love for fighting, and in particular, fighting the strong. And when I say pure-hearted, I'm not saying like he's really nice and kind. He is, but I'm not exaggerating. His, his heart is literally pure. He has no malintent, no mean thoughts. He is pure-hearted, and because of this, he's able to ride the Nimbus Cloud, which is essentially just a flying cloud, and you can only ride that if you are pure-hearted. And then getting into the meat of Goku and a bit of this debate, he is one of the strongest mortal warriors in all of the Dragon Ball multiverse. Keyword there being mortal. And this has been confirmed by the deities of the 12 universe and all the angels, gods of destruction, even Zeno himself. And he is the strongest warrior in his universe, Universe 7. And he has a natural talent for battle and an intense drive to get stronger. After countless battles, he is an incredibly wise tactician and strategist. And his experience and talent set him far apart and make him quite a formidable foe. He is also able to instantly learn techniques performed by other fighters after just seeing them once due to this and just his innate abilities. And he is incredibly strong and durable that even the angel from Universe 7, Whis, has offered him the opportunity to be the next god of destruction. And just for some context regarding that, the current god of destruction, Beerus, who Goku has fought and survived before, is so strong that he just tapped his nail on a planet and half the planet was immediately obliterated. So for Goku to be offered that role speaks a bit to his power level. As I said before, Goku's a character who will always get stronger and stronger. And as a member of the Saiyan race, as part of his biology, he has the ability that near-death experiences make him physically stronger. And so next time he will be able to counteract it, much like how, like, think think Doomsday for that, for that, for example. And also with his heritage, it gives him access to a lot of transformations and power-ups. 
to quickly sum them up, just don't want to go into them for into too much detail. He has about nine different forms with, with an asterisk. And starting off with his base form, this is just what he is every day. You see him with the spiky black hair. It's what you usually see. He's pretty recognizable. He has superhuman strength, speed, durability, superhuman senses, and endurance. He has extremely powerful lungs, which he has used to hold his breath in space, where he has flown across space, fought in space, and he can even survive in space. Due to his Saiyan lineage, he is also extremely resistant to heat. Moving on to his first transformation, we have the Great Ape transformation. Think Gorilla Werewolf. Which I know sounds odd, but all Saiyans are born with monkey-like tails that allow them to transform into gigantic apes with the full moon, and they gain immense destructive power. However, the tail is also their greatest weakness. Like, just grabbing it turns them immediately docile. Think, essentially, it's it's his kryptonite. But unlike with kryptonite, most Saiyans, and Goku included, just chop off the tail and it doesn't grow back. So that weakness is no longer a thing. And neither is that transformation. And then next, we have the Super Saiyan transformation, which you can recognize by the spiky yellow hair that gives him a considerable boost to his already insane physical abilities. And then we have Super Saiyan 2. Yeah, the naming convention is pretty lame. I swear it only gets lamer. Super Saiyan 2, which is shown by the yellow hair and blue electricity in his aura, boosts his abilities yet again. And then we have Super Saiyan 3, which has the, again, yellow hair, but it's much longer, and it has a receding hairline. This form is so strong that when Goku first transformed into it, it literally shook the foundations of the universe. However, the form does take immense energy to use and has therefore never been used outside of that one instance. Those four are all of the natural Saiyan transformations. However, Goku does not stop there. We next get into more of the godly powers, and we now have Super Saiyan God or Super Saiyan Red because of the very reddish pink hair that he gets from it, which is a divine transformation that only Goku has been able to do so far. And you are able to get this transformation by absorbing the energy of five pure-hearted Saiyans, which unlocks God Key which he then used to fight the God of Destruction Beerus, as I mentioned before. This form is so powerful, it has forced Beerus to use a higher percentage of his strength than he has in the past millions of years. And in this form, and any of the forms I mention next, he is able to regenerate now by pouring his God Key into his wounds. Next, we have, again, really shitty names. Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Or Super Saiyan Blue, because he now has blue hair. And this is now Goku's default transformation at this point in the story. He skips all other forms, just goes straight to this one, just due to the ridiculously high power level and the essential, essentially non-existent drain on his power or his energy just due to how often he's been in this form. It just, it's negligent. He can stay in this form indefinitely, so this will be essentially his new base. Again, this increases power level by ridiculous amounts and he then has the ability to do to use kaioken which increases his power even further and gives him a red aura and he used this in super saiyan god blue but this does cause extreme stress on his body for the next form there are several imperfect forms of it i'm just gonna skip the imperfect ones just to save on time because they're not nearly as important and they will never be used we have ultra instinct goku and Ultra Instinct is where you just fight purely on instinct alone, no emotions, no thoughts. Your body is moving faster than the time it takes for your mind to think and process what's happening. On average, your mind takes less than 150 milliseconds to form a thought. This form is so fast that most of the strongest fighters from every universe couldn't even see what was happening and they couldn't see the movements that Goku and his opponent Jiren were even making. Only uh, the deities were, in a select few, were able to see what was actually happening in that fight. This form could be recognized by its fantastic theme song, for one, and the black shiny hair that makes it almost look like a silver white. 
And this form puts Goku on the power level of the gods and is vastly more powerful than anything he's done this far. And after training, Goku's now able to use this form without any transformation, which frees him from the immense stamina drain that it has that it usually takes with this transformation. So he's able to do Ultra Instinct, so just turn off his mind for any other form instead of going into a separate form of its own. And now lastly, we have True Ultra Instinct. So as I said in the previous form, Goku has to be in a complete, calm, mind-blank state. This, this mimics the angels of the Dragon Ball world. And this is very hard for Goku to do. It's very much against his nature. So he came up with his own form of Ultra Instinct, which is technically an inferior form but it is much more suited to Goku as it requires less emotional detachment and he can still fight to his preferences with a lot greater clarity and precision. And in this form, he's able to create powerful clones of himself and he can fight much more efficiently and harness Ultra Instinct at a higher level than he is able to in Ultra in, in previous form. However, Goku has noted that he cannot last in this form for too long. And those are all the transformations he's able to do, but he does have a various techniques that he has learned over the years to help him in combat. As I said, there's the Kaioken, which boosts his powers by a factor of X, whichever X he just shouts out, but that increases the strain on his body. He's also able to use Ki and affect the air currents around him, producing powerful shock waves that he can use to strike opponents at mid-range. He's able to fly, shoot energy projectiles. His signature move is the Kamehameha Wave, which shoots a concentrated energy blast from his palms. He also has the Destructo Disc, which is a disc made out of key that cuts through virtually anything. He can use Solar Flare, which blinds his opponents. He's able to control energy and is able to make it bend, create shields, create landmines. He also has key sense where he can sense energy in other beings. He's able to transfer energy, use telepathy. He can teleport. And lastly, he can nullify other any sorts of energy attacks. As with any other character, Goku does have his fair share of weaknesses. As mentioned before, the tail was a weakness before it was cut off. And he does have an intense love to fight, and he loves to fight strong opponents. He will let his opponent power up so Goku can fight them when they're at their strongest. And Goku's incredibly immature. At one point, he thought marriage was a food, and that's how he met his wife and got married. He also tries to see the best in everyone and does show mercy at every single turn. He will let his opponents live and is very much against killing. Oftentimes, he does let his opponents live and they do become allies at one point or another. I think almost every single villain has. And Goku will not go out all out unless he actually needs to. He'll just keep matching his opponent's power levels because he just wants to have fun. It's also funny to mention that at one point in the series, he actually was able to die of bullets and he has died from heart disease. That's fucking hilarious. Okay, so uh, we'll briefly go over Superman's origins. We, we know that he's a baby from Krypton. His planet explodes. His dad puts him on a little spaceship, sends him to Earth. So Superman lands in Kansas. He gets adopted by the Kents. He goes off to uh, become a reporter. He meets Lois Lane, the love of his life. And we know his strengths. We know his weaknesses. We already know it's kryptonite. It really... It it really just is kryptonite. If you get a hold of that green rock, you have a you have a pretty solid stance against Superman. Uh, his abilities, we know he has super strength. I I feel weird saying that because his name is Superman, super strength, but he really does have immense strength. All derivative from our son. The closer Superman is to our son, the stronger he becomes. And there's been instances where Griff has mentioned uh, Superman fly directly into the sun just to become more powerful and and yes the longer he stays in the sun he really just takes sun baths the stronger he does get he's got you know x-ray vision super heat vision does that thing with his breath where he can you know essentially create strong strong winds or just freeze things the amount of things that he could withstand to lift are just staggering you know superman's been known to lift buildings mountains airplanes and of course he can fly he's got super speed although griff and i We'll both agree he is not faster than the Flash. Flash can time travel. So, you know, if you, if that question has been on your mind, no, Superman is not faster than Flash. And you could not reverse time by reversing the spin of the Earth. That's not a thing. No, that's a movie thing. It's bullshit. And I also think he's done it on one show. I think it's Superman and Lois. 
Bullshit. Uh, but 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 yes, no, you can't. If you spin you kill the earth everyone backwards, by doing that. Yes, that that was a a Donner thing. Can't reverse time by that. He's invulnerable to practically anything on Earth. You know, bullets aren't going to hurt him. A missile is not going to hurt him. He's had a nuclear weapon shot at him, and it stunned him. I guess we could say for a bit, but as soon as he was close to sun. Boom, right back to action. And he is skilled in combat. He's one of the founding members of the Justice League. And he's been trained by Wonder Woman. He's also had some training by Batman. So it's not its not as if the dude doesn't know how to throw a punch. He does. And that's basically Superman. I, I feel that most of us are very familiar with what Clark Kent Superman does. Uh, he's as Goku, as Riff said, you know, he's a very warm hearted individual. This guy, you know, it's 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 become memes nowadays, but he'll see a cat up on a tree and, and bring it down. He'll help an old lady cross the street. He does that kind of thing. And he doesn't, despite what Zack Snyder did, although I understand why he did it, the scene he doesn't kill. He he would rather very much like Goku. He would rather take his opponent down as opposed to killing him because he's a Boy Scout. He believes in the American way and justice, and he just doesn't want to take that step. So having said that, and having heard everything that Griff has to say about Goku, this one I think is not is you know I mean Goku has godlike levels of power. I guess it depends on which power level he's. I mean, black-haired Goku, normal Goku, I think Superman takes that one. But if Goku powers up to anything other than that, I just I, I just don't see it. But after all the research I did on both of these guys, and after everything Griff just said, and how excellently he pinned it out. The power levels Griff mentioned and the way he mentioned and, and the abilities that Goku has with those power levels. I just, I mean, yeah, Superman can fly into the sun as may, all damn day long if he wants to. Goku could just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger and reach godlike levels and then just flicker Superman and beat the crap out of him. Plus, Goku is immensely skilled in martial arts, which is something that Superman does not have. So if he powers up to those levels and given his knowledge of martial arts, yeah, I'll die on this hill. I think Superman's going to get the crap kicked out of him. Specifically, I think Goku wins eight times out of ten. I think he beats almost every iteration of Superman. The strongest base level Superman there is, is All-Star Superman. I don't think there's any base level Superman stronger than All-Star. I agree. And All-Star Superman, his strength is continent level. That's That's how strong as he is. Again, Goku can destroy planets. Superman's fought Doomsday and can die via brute strength. So we have seen that happen before. Comparing Goku to All-Star, I think, again, Goku just takes it from there in every iteration. Could, could Superman destroy a planet? Probably, yes. But not in one not, hit. But, but, but not exactly. Yeah. Not the way Goku. Goku could stand there and power up and just shoot a beam to the planet and destroy it. And then, Superman just doesn't have those those power levels. Exactly. He's very strong. He, but but again, as Grip said, he's been taken down. I don't care what you guys say. Nine times out of ten, Superman obliterates Batman. But Batman has kicked his ass. And Batman's a mere mortal. So he's also gotten his ass kicked by Wonder Woman, Dark Side. He died with Doomsday. These are all people that Goku would toy around with at first, but ultimately end up just demolishing them yeah i don't think the fight's gonna last that long against our Saul superman goku has the technique he has the endurance just go super saiyan blue it's it's over the only way these fights would go long is because of what griff said goku's warm-heartedness and his immaturity because he's a yeah. big ass kid and i hate using this phrase but let's be honest goku gets pissed the fight's over yeah however the two times out of 10, I think Goku does lose. I, there are two iterations of Superman I think absolutely kick Goku's ass. So despite all of Goku's powers, he has never once shattered reality, been so strong to be like punch a hole in reality or anything like that. Superman has, and especially on two occasions, there is Superman Prime or Superman 1 million, where he has been sitting in the sun for 15,000 years and is one of the most powerful beings in all of existence and is a multiverse level threat who can just blow everything away if he wanted to. There is maybe one or two characters in all of comic books that could probably take on 
Superman 1 million or Superman Prime or Golden Superman, however you want to say him. 15,000 years in the sun, that is going to be a prolonged fight. Goku's not going to win it. He's just way too strong. And then the other iteration of Superman, I think, wins. Is this, is a, this is a newer iteration. It's not even Clark Kent, actually. But it's Cosmic Armor Superman. This is what fought and defeated the Dark Monitor and is so strong can withstand rewrites of the plot which sounds as stupid as it is. And it's a new thing that happened with DC. And it was a it pretty, is dumb as all hell. It was a shit story. He can perceive other realities. He's even stronger than Superman Prime. It's an insane, invincible version of Superman. It's an android. It's nothing's beating this character ever. Even reality affecting powers doesn't affect this Superman. It is fucking ridiculous. In the comments, try to name one character. That can be Cosmic Armor Superman. Uh, Saitama can't. None of the gods. Darkseid doesn't even come close. This character, I think, is nigh unbeatable. He beat Dark Monitor. It's it, This character is never, never, ever losing. And those, I think, are the two Superman iterations that beat Goku. Just because they're... As much as Goku is bullshit, like, these two characters are bullshit. I mean, you have to sit in the sun for 15,000 years. And you have to co- write a character that is immune to rewrites and plot his literal power is plot armor and it's mentioned in the story that's just another level of bullshit in lazy writing that's never being beaten but other than that i think just goku has the technique power levels he has the energy to keep up his forms yeah no i agree that's that's really it goku wins thank you guys so much for watching who do you think wins between Goku versus Superman? Again, this is a fight that's going to change as more iterations of Superman and Goku gets more power-ups. It's going to change in a year, more than likely. But let's know who you think wins. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out our other Who Would Win of Humlander versus Superman. This is a very fun debate, which a lot of people seem to be a little bit confused, but it's honestly pretty one-sided.